Hello, this is Pastor Gabriel Varga. I'm pastor at the Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church and the Daytona Rescue Mission. This uh, daily Bible reading is for the 28th of July, and we have Psalms 53, 54, and 55 for the Old Testament reading, and the 27th uh, chapter of the book of Acts, verses 26 to 44. Now, I hope that you'll read that. It just takes 80 hours to read through the Bible. You say, oh, that's a long time. 14 minutes a day for the average reader. So get on track. Follow us. Read every day with us, and it'll be a blessing. So you read those chapters in the Old and New Testament, you'll get through it in a year. Now, we're going to talk today about the 53rd Psalm. And it says here in the 53rd Psalm, it says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Oh, corrupt are they, and have done <clears throat> abominable iniquity. Therefore, <clears throat> there is none that doeth good. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Did you know in higher academia, sad to say, uh, our eggheads, as it would be said of this day, that have doctor's degrees and teach in many of our higher institutions of learning that seem to have uh, all of the doctor's degrees. In many instances, these uh, ones that teach in the academic institutions in the United States and around the world, really, deny God. They they teach the godless uh philosophy and the godless teaching the theory of evolution which is foolishness of course it makes not a big of sense now i know one thing i'm not a real smart guy but i know they have the big bang theory i know if you're gonna if you're gonna have a bang you gotta have a firecracker or a gun or something to make a bang with and uh, you can't make a bang with nothing and that's the way they start and then they they have uh, foolish thoughts, but God's uh, theory of creation uh, makes much more sense to me. God created the heavens and the earth uh, in six literal days, 24-hour days. Yeah, that's right, because he's God, does whatever he wants. It didn't have to take that long if he didn't want to. And, and he created everything, and they produced after their own kind. Now, I'm just smart enough to know that chickens have chickens and ducks have ducks and cows have cows and geese have geese and people have people. We are his great uh, premier creation, created in his image with an eternal soul. Other animals don't have that. We do. Uh, so the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I didn't call him a fool. The Bible did. Uh, those that say they don't believe in God, they seem to try to be very smart, and and uh, really they're not very smart at all. Uh, they're a fool. Verse 2, God looketh down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and that did seek God. Every one of them is gone back. They are altogether become filthy, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Oh, this uh, psalmist, Psalm 53, uh, is also this uh, psalm of David. It's also created, uh, it's uh, remembered in the book of Romans. It's, uh, it's stated there, this thing, thing, that there is none, uh, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Uh, Romans uh, tell us that in the third chapter. So uh, we're all sinners. We're in trouble. We haven't done good. We've done wrong. We've sinned. We've sinned against the commandment of God, against the uh, teachings of God, against the law of God, and consequently, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Oh, my what a sad thing. We know death is inevitable. The wages of sin is death. We've all been to funerals. We're promised uh, three score and ten. That's 70 years. And if by grace and God extends us, maybe we get 80. 
Not many get much more than that. Very few make a 90 or very few at all make a 100. Because of sin, uh, we deserve the penalty of death. Um, now, you're not going to, you're not going to pass that. This, this body is going to perish. But also there's a second death. There's a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, a place called hell. Uh, the Bible says this, you say, well, I'm not, I haven't done enough, um, to warrant hell. Oh no. Have you ever told a lie? How many liars do we have uh, within the sound of my voice and can see me right now? Uh, you say, well, yeah, well, I've lied. I've lied real big lies. I just uh, had little, little, little bitty lies. Oh, uh, <laughs> a lie is a lie is a lie. There's not little lies or big lies. And some people say, well, I just lie for convenience sake. Most people because they don't want to have anything difficult. They'll just lie, just so quickly, a person will lie. Oh, I hope that's not you. The uh, All liars, the Bible says, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So that's what we deserve. The wages of sin is death and hell. And there's none that did, uh, did good, no, not one. Uh have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread they give not they have not called upon God now if you don't call upon the Lord you can't be saved the bible says in romans 10:13 whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved you've got to call on God you've got to believe in him You've got to have a heartfelt repentance. You've got to change your your heart attitude. You've got to say, oh, I'm a sinner. I'm a miserable sinner. I can do nothing to save myself. I need to put my personal trust uh, in God. I need to call upon him. What does it mean? Uh, well, the Bible, just before that, after Romans 10, 13 says, who service shall call upon him, the Lord shall be saved. But Romans 10, 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, uh, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth uh, man confesseth, and with the heart we believe unto righteousness. Romans 10, 9 and 10. So uh, you, need to, you need to confess him. You need to confess Christ. You need to believe in Christ. Know that he paid, he shed his blood for your sins and rose from the grave. And then Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does it mean to be saved? It means your sins are forgiven. You don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven. Isn't that a wonderful thing? It's a free gift. It's a free gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's heaven forever and ever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I'm so glad that I'm a saved person that I have the uh, the marvelous gift of eternal life. Uh, for, for they were in great fear where no fear was. Did you know that uh, it's a terrible thing to be a lost sinner and, and to have fear? The Bible tells us to fear not. If you're saved, you don't have to fear anything. Some say, I, I've tried to call them, haven't been able to figure that out, but uh, there are some that say, that there are uh, 365 fear knots in the Bible. Now, how many days are in a year? 365. That gives us one for every day of the year. Isn't that wonderful that we can every day have a fear knot and uh, that we don't have to fear? We can trust. The opposite of fear is trust. We've trusted Christ. We believe God has died for us and paid for our sins and rose again. We believe we're forgiven of our sins. We believe we have the good shepherd. We have a shepherd that can lead us. And so we don't have to have any fear. We can trust and trust in him. Oh, they fear. If you're not saved, you're a fearful person. You don't know. You're, you fear death and you fear things around you and, and you're haunted by all kinds of things if you're not saved. But if you're saved, you don't have any fear. Praise God. Uh, 
It says, if God hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee, thou hast put them to shame, uh, because God uh, hath despised them. God hates a wicked sinner that, that hates him and rejects him. And they are despised of God. Everyone that rejects him is despised of him. You said God loves everyone, but he despises a sinner that won't repent. Can anyone be saved? Anyone can be saved, and everyone can be saved if they simply trust in God. Uh, verse, uh, the sixth verse, the last verse in this 53rd Psalm, it says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. The salvation of Israel, what is that? That's Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's that one that was prophesied, and and we have all the Old Testament. Oh, it was from uh, the law and the prophets in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses, the books of law. Christ was prophesied. And then in the prophets. Oh, wasn't it beautiful? In the 53rd uh, chapter of Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. And uh, with his stripes, we are healed. Oh, he paid for our sins. And the law and the prophets tell of it. And they tell of us in the New Testament, Jesus said, you have, you have heard of me uh, in the Old Testament, and and he told him, remember, remember, uh, uh, remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Uh, Dives fared sumptuously, and uh, he died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes in torment. But Lazarus, he went to Abraham's bosom. Uh, he went to heaven, <clears throat> and oh, he was so troubled. And he said, oh, send someone from the dead to my brothers. I have five brothers. And he had five rich brothers that were, uh, weren't saved. And he said, if someone come from the dead, they'd get saved. No. You know, what, you know what the Lord said to him? They have Moses and the prophets. They have the Bible. If they won't listen to the Bible, if someone came from the dead, they wouldn't be saved. Would you listen to the Bible? Would you be saved? You say, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good Christian. I'm a baptized, uh, conf confirmed uh, Christian. I belong to a church that won't get you to heaven. You need to be born again. You need to be washed in the blood. My mother and father were Assemblies of God missionaries. Uh, I was saved in a, in a Methodist church. And I'm a Baptist preacher, but the Assemblies of God or the Methodist or the Baptist, none of those denominations can save you. Only Jesus can save you. And unless you get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that wonderful hope, uh, oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. Yes, it has come out of Zion. And, uh, and we can look forward to a home in heaven and look forward to that new Jerusalem. What a wonderful uh, Psalm, this is Psalm 53. It's one of the readings for today. 53, 54, and 55 are the readings uh, uh, for this day, the 28th. And then the New Testament, Acts chapter 27, verses 26 to 44. I hope you're reading them. I hope you're reading through the Bible with us in a year. And more than anything, dear one, I hope you're saved. And you have eternal life. If not, if not, call upon him today. Trust in him. Repent of your sins and you can be saved if you're not. God bless you. We'll talk with you tomorrow.